Member for Armidale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question, without notice, is to the Minister for Local Government. Minister, I refer to your recent meeting on the 23rd of May with representatives of the newly formed Communities Action Alliance, and I ask, can you confirm you made the following remarks or statements to the group? One, that the amalgamation process was flawed and it was done the wrong way around. Two, you have embarked on amalgamation exercise without a business case. And thirdly, the $5 million grant from the state government for the first year of amalgamation process will be spent on consultants to estimate the cost of amalgamations and thus the state government will not actually contribute to local government costs of amalgamation. Minister. Uh, I thank the member for the question uh, in regards to the meeting. Had. Um, I guess the important part here, the group that came to see me was uh, a representation of a number of action groups around the metropolitan area. We had a long discussion for one and a half hours regarding a number of issues. And I'll touch on a couple of them. The $5 million was a discussion around what's available in this year's budget. So one of their arguments at the point, or the conversation piece about the costing of local government, how it's going to be paid for and, and, and what that will be. And my, my discussions around the fact is I don't know the amount of local government, so I don't know the final boundaries, but this year there is $5 million available for local government. Once we know the final boundaries for them to go off and do some work, they can get a consultant or they can do some other preliminary work to find out those costs. So the area about the conversation the cost and the consultant is more to do with the fact is that there will be money to give to the local governments for them to go off and do that costing to come back to me as part of this reform process we've allocated in this year's budget. There's no issue sure whether I'll just go to consultants in general, it'll be up to the local government. What they have to do is put a case towards the, uh, to explain to us what the cost of the reform will be. Um, part of that reform, as we all know, there's another $15 million in cash and also $45 million in low interest loans. In regards to the discussion around the local government reform process and about um, having a case available for the community to discuss and look at the benefits of it, well, that is the job of the local government advisory board. And trying to explain to them that under the current act, and this is where I'm, I, I would, would probably, uh, Mr. Speaker, talk more about the fact that the act at the moment is what I'm using. The current 1990 fact act, 1995 act, is quite a, um, a cumbersome piece of legislation to work through for the reform process. And the reality is it does say quite clearly in there what I have to present to the advisory board for a, an amalgamation or a boundary adjustment. So they're the facts and figures that I provide to the advisory board for them to make the case. So that's part of their job to look at the five parameters around the advisory board. So the interesting part that um, we're actually uh, working on at the moment is to actually work out that work around the advisory board. Sorry? No, uh, the conversation about the actual um, how it could possibly work. I will admit, uh, member, that the actual reform process, since I've been in this job for 15 months, and it has been a challenging Mr. process. Speaker, member for Armada. Matter of relevance, my question was quite yeah. clear. Can you confirm that you made the statement that the amalgamation process was flawed and it was done the wrong way around? Right, Minister. No, I can say that the situation around the actual reform process. Did you make no. that statement or not? No. Just wait a minute. Well, that's why I'm member, asking the question. Member for Armadale. Right. Let the minister answer. The interesting part, uh, member, is the fact is that the conversation around which way do you approach the reform process from under the current legislation available to me is this is the way I go through it. If you had your time over again, maybe you could go a different way did around you ask, it. But, did but you if you did, did, if you if you were to go through the process to come up with the financial modelling around it, then you'd be having an argument around the boundary adjustment, where that boundary lies or where the amalgamation is. But each way you start this process, there's going to be an end product and there's got to be a final. Mr. Package. Speaker. Supplementary. No, no, it's not no, supplementary. It's a matter of relevance. Well, I think the I think the minister's finished. So. Like a supplementary question. Why are you refusing to commit to adequate funding for these amalgamations when you plan to t for them to take effect from the 1st of July 2015? Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I've said before in this house, we're in the currently in the stage of the local government advisory board um, to fund this process. Uh, there will be a lot of debate around how much this reform process will cost. Uh, we've put together a $60 million package over the three years. I think the interesting part here, until we know the final outcome of the advisory board, until I know the final boundary and the amount of local governments we'll have, and then we can probably have a bit of discussion around that money and how much more is needed. But we need to get some clear figures, and if we do that, we need to work through that process of the advisory board, and there's $5 million available to work out that costing. Well,